All right. Alberta Premier proposes ban on sex changes for minors, men competing in women's sports, allowing parents to opt out of gender lessons for students. This is all very sensible, right? So, I, I mean, Alberta is the most conservative province in Canada, and Danielle Smith is the uh, Premier of Alberta. This all makes perfect sense. Of course, lefties are freaking out about it, of course, because they freak out about anything. Anything they don't get, they freak out about. Obviously, it's the end of the world, Nazis, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's going to die. But it's so strange we live in a world where any of this would be necessary in the first place, like where it would be necessary to ban sex changes for children. That's truly, genuinely bizarre. It feels like the world, the Western world, just fell asleep for a while because I mean, I know in Canada, I mean, we'd had basically pretty reasonably responsible leadership in Canada, whether it was conservative or liberal party, since Brian Mulroney, since the 80s. Everybody, Cretchen, Martin, and these are, you know, um, Stephen Harper, everybody was reasonably good at leading, whether you like the, the, the conservatives or you like the liberals. Nobody was insane. There wasn't anybody insane. There wasn't anybody who was just genuinely damaging to the country or even intentionally damaging, damaging to the country since Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. So I know for Canada, we kind of sleepwalked into this disaster with Justin Trudeau because we just thought, we just expected that, well, you know, the, the you know for decades now, our leader has been not totally incompetent <laughs> and hasn't seemed to actually hate us to hate the Canadian population. So in walked a guy with the famous last name. He had the nice hair and the teeth. And uh, yeah, the country was kind of asleep, kind of kind of asleep, I think. It just went, okay, well, I guess he can do it, I guess. The media seems to like him. And it's taken a long time to wake up, but people finally have woken up and are starting to wake up. And now we we are we have these absurdities, these tragic absurdities, like sex changes for minors, which Trudeau loves. He loves that. He would trans every kid in Canada if he could, along with all the pets and then the bears and the mountain lions and raccoons, everything. He'd be asking, can you trans plants? Not transplant, trans plants. He'd be, he loves it. He can't get enough. So we find ourselves in this position because everybody was asleep and we wake up and we go, go what? What? What do you mean sex changes for, my, for kids? What? That doesn't make any sense. Yes, that is the reality that we're in, unfortunately. But now we're starting to wake up and we're, we're finding the strength and the energy to start to deal with some of these idi idiotic, these insane, tragically inept ideas that have been allowed to take over the culture. Not just the culture, institutions, medicine, men competing in women's sports. I watched those Olympics. I watched that Olympic boxing. That looked exactly like a couple of dudes beating the crap out of women. I mean, that is what it looks like, right? Allowing parents to opt out of gender lessons for students. The first thing is that the gender lessons should never be in school in the first place because they're fantasy. They're made up, right? This is just a, it's just lunatic ideology, right? This idea that there is this infinite series of abstractions. That's what gender is now. It's this infinite series of abstractions that could be anything. It's not just you could be a, it's not just that you could be, maybe you're a girl, maybe you're a boy, maybe you're kind of both, although that doesn't make any sense. It could be maybe you're a bird or a rainbow or a unicorn. Anything that includes frog gender, you know, is bullshit. Anything that includes any ideology, right? Any ideology that includes omnigender, which is all of the infinite number of abstractions that we call gender now, anything that includes that is bullshit. It's not real. It's obviously not real. So that shouldn't be taught in class in the first fucking place. But hey, at least allowing parents to opt out of it is a step in the right direction. All right, so there's Danielle Smith. She looks a bit glum in that one. She looks a bit sad in that one. Maybe having to deal with shit like this makes you a bit uh, sad. All right. Now, this, by the way, this had first been announced back in uh, late January of this year. And, of course, there was all the freakouts, usual freakouts. 
that you would expect, all the hysteria. But now it looks like they're getting ready to actually deliver on this, to actually enact this. Alberta Premier Daniel Smith announced on Wednesday a proposal to deliver, deliver on her promise last February to put the brakes on gender ideology in Alberta schools, ensure parental rights are respected, and to ban sex change operations for minors under 18 years of age. Again, this is sane, right? This is waking up. This is waking up from our stupor, our, our civilizational stupor, and realizing what's been going on around us, that there have been people very busily working away and infiltrating the schools, every institution, medical institutions, everything. And now we have to do something about it. I'm just saying that this is very good to see. Quote, in Alberta, we believe children should wait until adulthood before making physical changes to their body. Very sensible. Like, I don't know, tattoos say, right? Or body piercings. Furthermore, we believe in the rights of loving parents to be meaningfully engaged with their children's education when sensitive issues are taught. And women and girls deserve the opportunity to compete fairly and safely in Female-only divisions, Smith wrote in a post on X. It seems like the premier of Alberta seems to understand that we're a sexually reproducing species that's sexually dimorphic, and that there's a reason why there were male and female divisions in the first place. I mean, this all used to just be perfectly obvious, didn't it? All right. Firstly, licensed Alberta doctors will be prohibited from performing gender assignment surgeries on youth under the age of 18 in Alberta. Puberty blockers and hormone therapies for the purpose of gender reassignment for minors under the age of 16 will also be prohibited unless a minor has already commenced their treatment at this time. So unless a minor has already commenced their treatment at this time, I think this is a compromise with the lunatics. I there's I there's never really any point in trying to compromise with the modern left, you know, with the activists I'm talking about, right? The people who are really involved in this. I'm not talking about your average liberal voter who really doesn't know what's happening. I'm talking about with the activists. There's no point ever trying to cooperate with them because they won't cooperate with you. They will just scream bloody murder at any dissent from what they want. If you say no to anything, no matter how crazy, they will scream bloody murder and everybody's going to die and blah, blah, blah. But here we have prohibited prohibited from performing gender assignment surgeries on youth under the age of 18. So that's really the least you can do, isn't it? I mean, look, adults, I think it should be prohibited under the age of 25 because your brain hasn't, that's when your brain starts. Uh, finally, it, that's when your brain stops developing. But okay, 18, that's better than nothing, right? Puberty blockers, hormone therapies for the purpose of gender reassignment for minors under the age of 16. So, I mean, I just think it should be at least 18 across the board, frankly. And I think as well, there, there, there needs to be, even for adults, there needs to be guardrails, serious guardrails. It shouldn't just be you show up at, for an appointment with a gender doctor or some other, or any doctor, and 30 minutes later, you're walking out with you know, prescription for testosterone or estrogen or something like that. Let's see. For 16 and 17-year-olds wishing to proceed with puberty blockers or other hormone therapies for the purpose of gender reassignment, they may do so only if they have parental, psychologist, and doctor approval. Well, you can find a psychologist and a doctor who will approve it in like three seconds. They don't want to get, they don't want to get protested, right? There's a lot. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of either just totally ideologically corrupt doctors and psychologists or doctors and psychologists who just are afraid. They're afraid of the activists coming down on them. So that's not going to be a problem. Now it comes down to the parents. Hopefully the parents are responsible and have some courage as well. Smith promised that the new legislation will require parental notification and consent for a teacher or staff member to change a child's name or pronoun and publicly use that name or pronoun, including in a classroom or school assembly. How, again, it's like, it's like civilization is waking up and realizing that while they were asleep, lunatics took over their house and fucked everything up. Require parental notification and consent for a teacher or staff member to change a child's name or pronoun and publicly use that new name or pronoun. 
the fact there are teachers that think it's okay for them to do that without a, without a parent's notification is a major shift in Western culture. That's a major shift. That's a an absolutely leftist authoritarian shift. I've said many times, liberals. There's no. There's not really any liberals anymore. Whatever traditional liberals are left are with us, us at this point. And if they're not, they're not. They're just not paying attention. Right? They have no idea what's actually going on. This is all just a far left authoritarianism. Far left. It's not liberal anymore. This liberalism is gone. Right? That counterbalance. That kind of. What we consider traditional liberalism, conservatism, there was a counterbalance that existed for a long time. That's gone now, right? It's not liberals on the other side anymore. Now it is authoritarian leftists. I'm talking about the actors. I'm talking about the people, the, the engine of modern leftism. I'm not talking about the person who's got to vote for Trudeau because, oh, he just seems nice. And they don't have any idea what the hell's happening. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I mean, the idea that a teacher would be able to change a child's name or pronoun or lie to them about being some magical gender is absurd. I mean, that's insane. That should be criminal. I mean, that should be insta insta firing and a total inability to ever work with children again should be. The fact that we now have to reinstate basic sanity and parental rights is it really tells you something it tells you how asleep western civilization has been the new law will also impact women and girls in competitive sports the proposed legislation will prohibit individuals bo uh, born male from competing against women and girls in competitive sports smith said this rule will be binding for all competitive women's sports and all provincial sporting organizations it will apply to school kindergarten to, through 12 as well as post Secondary schooling. You know what we should do? Who was it? Was it anti-pop that was bringing up the uh, the women's team that decided they were as good as men, played men, and <laughs> it didn't end, played a men's team, and it just didn't end very well? We should look some of this stuff up because it is pretty funny, actually. There's some women's soccer teams that, uh, like, the very best teams that played, like, honestly, high school boys did not go well for them. We should probably check some of that before we leave this story. Trudeau Health Minister Mark Holland. Uh, Mark Holland. Should we go on a rant about Mark Holland? <laughs> Complete lunatic. Wrote on X that he was concerned about Smith's impending legislation. Well, normally he's hysterical, so maybe just concerned is an improvement. I am concerned by Premier Smith's announcement regarding gender-affirming care in Alberta. Gender-affirming care is a euphemism. Healthcare decisions, including gender affirming care, should be made between families and their doctors. What if the doc? What if? What if it becomes fashionable to just chop off your children's legs, and doctors are shamed into accepting it? They're worried that they'll lose their practice if they don't. I mean, we're talking about sex changes for children here. We're talking about stopping children from growing into healthy adult bodies because of puberty blockers, stunting their growth permanently, sterilizing them. We're talking about double mastectomies for confused teenage girls. That's what we're talking about here. I mean, this is the purest lunacy, right? While everybody was asleep, lunatics like this took over. Healthcare decisions, including gender affirming care. Gender affirming care, it's this is the hilarious thing. It's a euphemism. It's the opposite of gender affirming care. It's convincing children. Convincing children who have no idea what it's like to live in a properly developed adult body, a fully developed adult body and adult brain as adults. They have no idea. It's about tricking them into thinking they're the opposite sex and somehow they can become that through a lifetime of taking drugs and surgeries. They can become not just some facsimile of that, but actually be that don't don't you know that trans women are women and trans men are men that's what these people these lunatics who have taken over that's what they're telling gender affirming care it's the opposite that is the opposite of its meaning the far left always accuses you of doing what they're doing always total utter lunacy total utter lunacy what if it was what if what if you thought that uh 
I don't know, every second child should have their eyes removed on their 12th birthday. And what if that, I'm telling you right now, if the left decided that that was, that was what they wanted, okay, you'd start seeing it. You'd start seeing people advocate for that. You'd start seeing medical professionals saying, oh, no, it's totally valid. You would. I mean, that is, we're talking about, when we're, we're not talking about anything less insane here. We're talking about castration. Young people, chemical castration. Talking about double mastectomies for teenage girls. You're talking about stopping children from growing, developing into healthy adult bodies. Like, you actually don't need even analogies. I mean, it's, it's that horrible. It's that insane. Trudeau Health Minister Mark Holland is very, he's very concerned that there will be children who won't be tricked into destroying their health for the rest of their lives. Seems kind of evil to me. Seems kind of evil to me. So just as an addendum to this, so Alberta Premier proposes ban on sex changes for minors, men competing in women's sports, allowing parents to opt out of gender lessons for students. So part of that obviously is uh, puberty, puberty blockers. And let's take a look here. Some minors can stay on puberty blockers under new Alberta law, Smith says. So yes, children already getting puberty blockers can stay on them, which I think is a compromise that she made to the lunatics. I think any attempt to at compromise is pointless because they don't care. Just anything that you don't agree with them on is a cause for total hysterical lunacy. But that's what she's doing there. Pharmaceutical hormone blockers like gonadotropin-releasing hormone analogs are synthetic compounds that target receptors in the brain that regulate the production of sex-related hormones, effectively fooling the brain into thinking such hormones are already being produced. Regular injections of such drugs delay sex-specific changes in adolescence, for example, facial hair, breast development, also just the development of your sexual organs, your reproductive organs, which if you want to have kids in the future, you, you need those. Defenders of puberty blockers say they give children dealing with gender dysmorphia crucial time to explore their gender identity. Critics point to scientific uncertainty over the long-run cognitive and physiological effects of prolonged use. Well, they like to say, the defenders of this like to say that, well, it just starts up again. Uh, you go off them, it starts up again. And that's true if you're still going through puberty, but the, the part of your puberty that you've lost, you've just lost that. So you're not going to experience the full puberty that you would have otherwise. And again, this is going to affect your reproductive organs. Uh, this is going to affect your body. This is going to affect IQ, any number of things. It's not just this, oh, it's just like turning a switch on and off. It's not like you're, you can't be on it for two years and then get that two years back. That's gone at that point. Puberty blockers have historically been used to slow down early puberty in cisgender children. I, I, you know, the way that all this language has just made, it's just become ubiquitous. Every, National Post is nominally a conservative newspaper, but they've snuck these words in these kind of, Meaningless, gibberish words, cisgendered children. They're just children. That's what they are. We shouldn't use these words. We should totally reject the far-left lunatic language. With treatments generally winding down by the time patients hit their preteen years. So, yes, so there is something called precocious puberty, and it has been used for that, for children whose puberty starts too early, right? And so that they will put them on that until a point where they can just have a normal puberty like all the other children. Minors who use puberty blockers to treat gender-related distress tend to start using them later on, typically as preteens or teenagers. Yes, it's to prevent them from actually growing into a healthy adult body. They would go through a normal puberty, like every human has throughout all of history, except unless there's some sort of disorder like um, precocious puberty. but Every other human being just goes through, unless there's something wrong, right? I mean, again, the fact that you eat, this is even talk, the fact that we even have to talk about this is so insane. Puberty blockers were a major focus of a recent review led by retired British pediatrician Hilary Cass, a former president of the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health. The final report of the so-called Cass review 
released in April, concluded that not enough is known to say whether puberty blockers are beneficial for gender dysmorphic minors or safe over the long run, citing the poor quality of existing studies. We also said that there's good reason to believe that the, it's not good, that it's in fact bad. This is what happened in Sweden. Who started? They were one of the first ones starting with this and said, no, it looks like the evidence actually seems to point to worse results because of this. Subsequent to the report's publication, the UK's then-conservative government issued a temporary ban on puberty blockers for minors under the age of 18. The ban has continued under the country's new Labour government. Smith told the National Post in May that the review's findings vindicated her government's position on gender-affirming. Again, that's a euphemism. It's exactly the opposite of what it actually means. Medicine for minors. I mean, gender affirming, if there were any sense in the world right now or any sense to language right now, would mean taking a, a confused child and helping them through their confusion into realizing that there's nothing wrong with them, that they're not in the wrong body, that it's the only body that they will ever have. And it doesn't even make any sense to say that you're in the wrong body. Help them through that so that they can go through a normal, healthy, uh, development into an adult body and mind. That would be gender affirming. It's which we, uh, we use 1984 all the time, right? <laughs> all the time. This is 1984. 